Now, I want to do an example with complex matrices or complex vectors here, because one has to be careful when you do your Fourier coefficients, you have like the vi dot xj over vi dot vi. When you're working with complex inner products, that is the Hermitian product, the order does matter. If you switch these two around on the top, you'll actually get the conjugate and then you won't actually have an orthogonal basis that you need. Uh, so do make sure you get the order correct. As, and so let's go through the let's go through the details of that right here. So if we take our first vector uh, u, we're just going to leave it alone. We don't really need to modify whatsoever. So x one, the first vector we're going to construct right here, will just be u one i and zero. So to find the second one, we're going to call this one or not y. We'll call it uh, x two. I guess that makes more sense x2 is we're going to take the previous vector v and we're going to subtract from it u dot v over u dot u right here and remember as we're taking the hermitian product we take the uh, conjugate of the first factor so as we i'm going to be a little bit more detailed in the inner product here so if you take u dot v you're going to get one bar times one plus i bar times zero plus zero bar times negative i. And this sits all above one bar times one plus i bar times i plus zero bar times zero. Of course, the bar is just the complex conjugate times this by the one i and zero like so. Now there's a lot of zeros here, so this does simplify simple enough. 1, 0, negative i. And so the conjugate of a real number, of course, is just itself. So you're going to get 1 plus 0 plus 0 for the numerator. For the denominator, you get 1 plus 1. i bar times i is just going to be negative i times i, which is 1. And then 0 there. 1i and 0. And so that fraction... Make sure that looks like an i. So the fraction, we get negative one half times the vector one i and zero. And so even though these are complex numbers, this will just be a linear combination like anything else. We're going to get one minus a half, which is a half. We get zero minus i halves, which is be minus i halves. And then we're going to get negative i minus zero. So we get negative i right there. And so this should be orthogonal to the original vector. And again, if you don't like the fractions, take out the one half. Uh, that gives you one negative i and negative two i, uh, like so. And we can check. And we're going to take our x two because we don't we don't want the one half scalar. We're we're good without it. And so we're going to take x two to be this vector, one negative i and negative two i. And so let's check to see, in fact, if we got an orthogonal set or not. So as a reminder, the first vector x1, which we didn't change, that was the vector 1i0. And x2 is what we just got a moment ago. 1, negative i, negative 2i. And so if we take the inner product of these things, remember we're taking the Hermitian product here, x1 dot x2. We're going to take 1 bar times 1. We're going to get i bar times negative i. And then we're going to get 0 bar times negative 2i. Uh, well, 0 times anything is easy enough. That's 0, even for complex numbers. You get 1 times 1, which is a 1. And then you're going to get a negative i times a negative i. That's a double negative, so you get 1 minus i squared. I'm sorry, i plus one plus i squared, negative, or i squared itself is negative one, so you get one minus one, which is zero. So this, in fact, shows us that x1 is orthogonal to x2, like we wanted to. And this span didn't change. We still have the same spanning. We still have the same span that we did before. So if we take the subspace span by those two vectors, u and v, x1, x2 will span the exact same thing. So we have to be a little bit more careful with, with um, complex vectors. But other than that, um, it's, it works out pretty nicely.